Home Safe, like you founded this organization, which, you know, is there to kind of help people who are vulnerable, not necessarily just women, but, you know, mainly women, but anyone in a vulnerable situation to kind of help them get home. So like, kind of tell us a bit more about that and how that started and where the idea came from. Yeah, so I think the idea originally came from when I saw on the news that Sarah Everard got murdered. And like, at that time, the whole thing that I was seeing on Instagram was just girls like reshowing it. Mm. And I was sat there thinking like, right, this is a problem that girls and women are facing but it's not a problem that they should sort of be solving. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I'm like a straight white guy who's never been a creep. I'm not a weirdo at all, but I'd be lying if I said that I, like I feel like everyone thinks that these people who'd go out and do these things are these like crazy weirdos that are just like evil and like live in the woods, like, and just no one hears about when Mm. in reality, they are literally people who like, we go out drinking with that you just might not know about or that you notice some weird shit and you won't call them out on it. Mm. And it's like, I just thought, I was like, it's so messed up that as a lad, I walk home, never had to like look behind my shit, like turn around and think, fuck, is someone following me? Or like, what's going on? And then I looked at the statistics and it was saying that like, in the UK, it's like, I think it's every three days, a woman dies at the hands of a man in the UK, like every three days, right. just fucked up. And like so for sexual harassment as well, girl, it's like ninety-seven percent of ninety-seven percent of girls have been sexually harassed in the UK. That's like the YouGov statistic that came out. Um, and I was like, sure, there's something you can do about this, right? And basically, <laughs> I just put out an Instagram post, and I was sat there being like, right, how do I? I was like, if you, my my method of thinking was that if you have someone that's do you know when people have like a child that's sick or someone that's sick and they need treatment in America? They set yeah. up a GoFundMe and like people chip into that and then you fire them out to there. So I was yeah. like, and then they get treatment and like, it's obviously a great thing and a lot of people do, it's amazing. So I was like, if girls can't afford to get home, I was like, what if there was just a bank of money where for girls who like work night shift, work, work till like late at bars or just can't afford to get home or like walking home, I was like, what if they could just like, email us their receipt and we just send them like a tenner to yeah. help and it was literally meant to be like when i lo- when i when i posted it i was like i'm gonna do like 20 rides fuck knows where this money's gonna come from i'm just gonna ask people to donate to this gofundme um so i was like we'll see where it com- where the money comes from posted it being like if you can't afford to get home email us your receipt and we'll pay for it and then put my phone down and like in the first week we got like 35 quid and i was like right fuck like this isn't i was like oh my god because it was basically i think that people That's were like lame. i know because <laughs> in it and i was like oh fucking hell this yeah. is great and i think because the people like because i had like about four other like businesses that i was trying to like set up before and i think people were just like fucking hell just another idea that might just come up with like oh right, yeah right. classic match and then i was like do you know what i'm going to rephrase it because i was like i need this to go big so instead of like I looked at the post and I was like, right. Because originally it was, it looked really cool. It had like a cool design. I was like, I need to strip it down. So I was like, I need this to go viral. So I just changed the text, changed, made it just black text on white background, just as simple as you can. Posted it and literally within an hour, it, my phone was just going nuts. Like everyone was resharing it. Mm. And then I was just going through like my, like people who I follow on Instagram stories and it was just like nonstop, everyone had it on there. And like people from like Love Island were sharing it, um, had like famous people, like well, like celebrities and stuff donating to the GoFundMe, mm. had like four random people just donate a grand each. Oh, sure. that I had wow. no idea That's they it. were like anonymously. Yeah, because you raised like nearly <coughs> six grand in the end, didn't you? Yeah, we were, so I think Uber in total we raised about, yeah, like seven grand on there. And then we had like other, other platforms as well. So I think in total we raised about 10K um, on the first round, which was that um, through like Just Giving, mm. um, GoFundMe, all those platforms like Facebook, all those sorts of things. And it just blew up out of nowhere. Like mm. I sort of wanted it to blow up and I think it was like I manifested it in a good way where I was yeah, like, okay, yeah, yeah. this will need to work. And then came the time of like, right, shit, like Sky News got, got calling, all these news outlets were like, let's do an interview, the independent, like Time Out, Glamour, all these lad Bible. And I was like, okay, sick. 
And at that time, especially when I did that Sky News interview, they were like, so how are you going to... Um, how are you going to make sure that people aren't going to scam it? And I was like, oh, we've got all these security systems in place and stuff. And realistically, at that point, I had no fucking idea how we were this. Because I was like, Fake it till you I make opened it. the website and like we had about, I can't remember how many it was. I think it's about a thousand people that had already applied. And I was like, okay, right. fuck, how am I going to like bank transfer a thousand people not from my bank account, because I was like, I'm not going to be able to do a thousand bank yeah. transfers. I'm going to need mm -hmm. like people to help me. And I was like, we can't do it from my personal account. So then I had to find like a business account that allowed you to transfer from different accounts. Then like <sighs> bank transfers weren't going through. And then we had the problem of like international fees where like people have, because a lot of students and stuff in London are, have like international accounts. Okay. So I was like, fuck, how, like, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, then eventually, so I absolutely blagged it on that Sky News interview, blagged it everywhere. And then the next month, I was like, okay, we're going to work it out. We're going to figure out how everything's going to go. It will be sick. Uh, we'll f figure out a way to do it. And then I landed, like, I went out for a beer with my mates um, and realized that halfway through that, I'd always be the kid that, like, stays out the longest, always, like, the last person there, go to an afters, blah, blah, blah. But then I ended up going... I was like, lads, well, I feel like my legs are just killing. Like, I need to go home. Like, there's something's just not feeling right. Went home. And then by the time I got home, I was like, fuck, like, I'm just not able to walk. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I called my mum. My mum was like, oh, just call, like, 111. It'll be all right. So I called 111. Ended up going to the hospital. And they were like, I was in A&E &E for about, like, 12 hours. And they were saying that like, oh yeah, it's all like, we'll, we're just waiting for your results back and stuff. And then they put me into this room where they like tell patients and stuff like tough news. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck are they gonna tell me here? Oh and basically God. they sat me down there like, okay, so you've got this thing called Guillain-Barry syndrome that's basically been triggered from like you working and like not sleeping and just basically burning out. And then they're like, what's gonna happen is your body's basically gonna like fully pretty much paralyzed for the next month. And then you're gonna have to work for like, it will take about a year to recover. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And I then didn't basically that like that month, that month where like home safe was like, it was the time it had to go right. I basically landed in hospital with like two people who helped me doing it. And like my whole, like just had no feel in my body and had to oh go through God. like what, this so you're mad fully treatment. like basically paralyzed. Yeah, I was like paralyzed from like my legs, like my legs, I couldn't walk, could like whole like arms and stuff, like half my face looked like I had like a stroke. So it was just like it was mad. Oh it God. was actually I mental. I never yeah. knew this as a thing, just from burning yourself from out. From like burnout. And because I had basically, I was burnt out like mad and then went and got the COVID vaccine. And that apparently was like, because my, because obviously my immune system was just on the floor because I'd yeah. just not been sleeping, I'd yeah. just been working. And then I went and got a thing that was like, meant to make your immune system work even harder. It was just like, bang. And yeah, it was one of those things where like, the chances of you getting it are like stupidly small. Like it's some, like when I went there, they, they said that they've never like treated it. They had no, and I was like, oh great, well fucking, <laughs> at least I'm in safe hands. And then, <laughs> Yeah, like the treatment that I had, like if I was in America, would have cost me like 150 grand. Wow. Like it was mental. Jesus. So, so spent, like, the, time that you, the time that you had like off, obviously where you weren't, you were in hospital and you couldn't do anything. Is that like, did you use that time to kind of do more work or were you oh, I was, not able to do anything? So basically the doctors were like, you need to completely relax. They were right. like, this treatment that you're gonna have is gonna, like it was excruciating pain because mm. it was basically, it felt like I had like a drip put in and it felt like I just had acid like pouring through my oh whole body, no. like the whole, I was like, this is rough. What the fuck? And then <clears throat> they were like, you need to completely like chill out. And I remember they did like this um, operation on my back as well to get some sort of like, some fluid out of like my back to test or something. And they had to like go through my spine and stuff. Uh. And one time, imagine this, right? So the nurse was like, they did it and then I was like, oh, she was like, does that hurt? I was like, I've never actually felt pain like this. I was like, I felt like my whole body just like seized up. And then she took it out and she was like, um, 
she gets another nurse in. She goes, Oh, hold on, do we need to use like an anesthetic? And she was like, Oh, yeah, like, yeah, we Oh, did. my God. And I was like, <laughs> I've just been sat here for like 20 minutes, and this nurse was trying to just poke this needle in and in. And I was like, Oh, my oh, fucking man. God, this is like the, like, literally, like, tears rolling down my eyes. I was like, This is so rough. I'd sue them. You yeah, can absolutely bad. see them. My Isn't ex sued the. But she was NHS she was an absolute darling, so I was like, oh, don't worry. I know because they all work like mad long chefs. They all yeah. work like twelve hour chefs. I get people. that, but if someone jabbed me in the back with that and a say, I would absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I was just like, oh yeah, it's all right. And then after that, I was thinking, okay, that's the worst part thing that I was ha- meant to have done. She was like, I was like, just get it over and done. She's like, no, we'll have to do it tomorrow. And I was like, oh my fucking god, like I actually can't deal with this. Mm. So I had to wait until the next day and get it done. But yeah, the whole time I was in hospital, I was still just like fucking working. I, like I had calls with, so we got a partnership with Uber and all my calls with Uber pretty much I had like in hospital just with, I was like, oh yeah, my camera doesn't work. I can't like, there's something wrong with my laptop. But the issue is that like, all these people, I was in like this ward with a load of people. It was just these old geezers that would just scream and shout all oh, the time shit. so I was like it was really hard mute to, on yeah. mute off every time I was like speaking I was like yeah that sounds great mute like right because it was crazy so that Didn't, was quite hard then obviously to like yeah it was like so mentally yeah. it was mad because it was one of those things where when I the more you read about it basically th- that condition that I had a lot of people never recover from it mm. and end up like in a wheelchair or end up with like severe like really bad like Para, like yeah basically paralyzed whether that's legs Mad. or like most body mm. it's crazy mm. and i was just like why the fuck now like why like this is the time that <clears throat> the worst time this could possibly happen mm. and it's happened but then yeah i guess it sort of made me want it more where i was like fuck mm. it i'm just gonna like go and it, i think at the point where i was like do you know what like if this goes well, I was like, do you not know fuck it if I do end up like that, or if anything bad happens, I was like, fuck it. At least I'll be like, I've tried it, cracked on as hard as I could, and then, yeah, thankfully recovered all well and everything's back sweet now. Yeah. But it was just, yeah, it was weird as fuck. God, that's crazy. Yeah, that is mad.